I look at some people dress up in jacket and tie. I would never take them for granted. Or so they feel, so they lie. When we hear about all the worthlessness, they proclaim they innocent. If all that I say, all you misbelieve, let me take a look at the parliament. All your hypocrites, you put Yugi in the mental home. All the hypocrites. Are your father sex tape on the phone? All your hypocrites. Julian Le Dunglen Jackson in peace. All your hypocrites. A few years ago, Ralph Raper police. If you hear all you ain't see me, all you feel, all you destroy me. I will never ever surrender. The politicians in Bokosi. All your hypocrites. Good day. My name is Chief Strongblood, St. Vincent and the Grenadines' favorite and most hated son, the diaspora machismo. My people, over the course of the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we had had five political leaders in the form of a chief minister in Ebenezer, Theodore Joshua, Milton Cato. We had James Mitchell, we had Adam Eustace, and we had Ralph Gonzalez. I am here to prove to you that all of the political leaders we have, there was only three of those political leaders who understood what development and developing a small island economy was all about, and I'm going to bring you proof that these were the only people who understood what developing a small island economy and developing small islands was all about. But before we get into this, let me take this opportunity to say good morning to Emma John, Scott Kelvin, Randy Stripe Dublin, Scott Lewis, Keisha Wallace, Parel Johnson, and Dwight Phillips becoming a member of a St. Vincent we come from. My people, James Mitchell, Ralph Gonzalez are the only two leaders that stood at the particular helm of St. Vincent and the Grenadines that did not know what they were doing. Even E.T. Ebenezer Theodore Joshua, who was the first chief minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, were a better leader and understood how to develop a small island economy far better than James Mitchell did, far better than Ralph Gonzalez did. Well, don't talk about Milton Cato. Milton Cato was a boss and he understood very well how to develop small island economy and he proven it but somehow James Mitchell managed to convince Vincentian by his grandstanding in Parliament that Milton Cato did not understand or did not know how to develop a country my people James Mitchell, the two Caucasians, James Mitchell and Ralph Gonzalez, did not have an idea of what they were doing. And I can prove it. Listen to how you're supposed to develop infrastructure. You will say Barbados have an international airport. Trinidad has an international airport. Grenada have an international airport. St. Lucia has an international airport. And you will consider it will be nice for St. Vincent to have an international airport. But the question you must, you must ask here, do we have a need 
for an international airport. And that is the question you have to come to terms with. Because if you have an international airport and you don't need one, that international airport will become a white elephant and it will become a burden on the economy. Let me give you an example of how we are supposed to develop infrastructure in a country. What will be nice to have and what is needed is two different things. The things that is needed will help the country economy to grow. But the things that is nice to have will become a burden for the economy and it will not become productive and therefore it will cause the country to lose money. Example, since in the 50s, St. Vincent and the Grenadines were given the opportunity to plant bananas and we have a ready market in England. So the, the England decided to help us to plant our bananas and develop the banana industry because they had a need for bananas in England. They were shipping bananas on lighters. What they did, they packed the bananas in small boats um, on their trunks as they, as they reap and they take them off to the lighters. They hand them up to the lighters. The people pack them in the hull of the lighters and ship them off to England. This is how bananas were shipped. It was a primitive method of shipment. People will be carrying a bunch of bananas on their heads to the boat. Now, as technology increase and the volume of bananas that is needed by England increase, we have to now develop the infrastructure to facilitate the shipping of bananas. So, Ebenezer Theodore Joshua, the Chief Minister, in the 1960s, went out, he got money, and he developed the other depot of harbor, which is, and they had the, the geese shed attached to it. Now, this was a needed development because it would help in the increased production of bananas and ensure that more bananas is shipped out and there were less time doing it, less chances of damaging and so forth. So we see here, we needed a deep water harbor to facilitate the increased shipment of bananas. What is he happening here? Immediately, as soon as the deep water harbor was completed, it was productive. It started being beneficial in seeing St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Our GDP grows. We start shipping more things. So here we see the deep water harbor that they borrowed the money to build was able to pay for itself. This is how a country put in infrastructure to facilitate the growth of the country and have that infrastructure pay for itself as it is being used. My people, Ebenezer Theodore Joshua realized that air transportation is becoming popular and it's becoming cheaper. We had a lot of people who were living in Trinidad and Tobago. We had a lot of people who were going back and forth from Grenada. We had a lot of people who have been living in Barbados and going to Barbados. We had a lot of people who were going away to study. And in order to facilitate the easy movement of our citizens back and forth, he developed the E.T. Joshua Airport. He put that in place. So here we see what is happening. Mr. Joshua was putting infrastructure in place to facilitate the growth of the country. Not because, not because we wanted one, not because it would be nice to have one, but because it will facilitate the growth of our country. He did the deep water harbor to facilitate the development of the banana industry. He did the airport to facilitate the easy movement of our citizens in the islands. 
and to connect to international flights. This is how we put in infrastructure to facilitate something that is already happening, facilitate it grows. James Mitchell, one of the things that you don't do, right? You don't put in an infrastructure just because it would be nice to have one. This was what James Mitchell did. He built an airport in Beckway because it would be nice to have an airport in Beckway. There was not a demand for air travel in Beckway. There was no demand for air travel in Beckway. So putting an airport in Beckway was a waste of resources. Today, that airport in Beckway is a white elephant and it is a burden on the nation. James Mitchell, he built a cruise ship boat. There was no demand for a cruise ship boat in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The cruise ship boat is a white elephant in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and it is a burden on the economy. He built the Utley Hall Marina. He broke the first rule in administering the affairs of a government. Governments don't get involved in private sector investment. What they do? They develop the infrastructures, the roads, the lighting, the telecommunication system, the wharfs, and so forth. St. Vincent has not had an industry where ship repairs is concerned right and if they had an industry where ship repairs is concerned it would have been a private industry and therefore if those private investors who are doing ship repair for example Beulah's yacht operated in Calico they were building they were responsible for building yachts catamaran and so forth now if they had expanded their business where they were now taking in large volume of business for the repair of ships and yachts and the repainting of ships and yachts, then Mr. Bueller would have been expected to expand his business to accommodate that. So when James Mitchell went and borrowed over 200 million US dollars to build the Utley Hall Marina, he break the first rule in running a government and that is to get involved in private sector. Now, the Utley Hall Marina is a white elephant and it is a burden out on the country. So we see we have the cruise ship birds, the, the airport in Beckway and the Utley Hall Marina. These were projects that were put into place because it would be nice to have them. It would be nice to have them. There was no need for them because it wasn't going to facilitate the development of something that was already in place. It would be nice to have a cruise ship world. So you build a cruise ship world. It is there a waste. It would be nice to have a, a marina because St. Lucia have one. The marina is there wasting uh, I saw a white elephant. It would be nice to have an airport in Beckway. There was no demand for air travel in Beckway because the culture in Beckway, you know, Beckwayans are seafaring people. Beckwayans were always traveling by boats. There was not an influx in tourists who wanted to go to Beckway using air travel. So today, the Beckway Airport is a white elephant. Now, to show James Mitchell really didn't understand government. The coconut oil factory was not making money. He caused it to be closed. Put in thousands of Vincentians who were providing the raw material for the coconut factory as in copra out of a dollar. He put hundreds of Vincentians who were working at the factory itself out of a job. Foolish man. 
ECA Limited, a export company. Thus was developed because of the infrastructure that Milton Cater put in. Went out of business under James Mitchell administration. Milton Cato, who was a visionary some 50 years ago, Milton Cato developed the Camden Park Industrial Estate. He did not just develop the Camden Park Industrial Estate. He went out and he bring companies to utilize the cheap labor. Because remember in St. Vincent in the 60s and the 70s, we had a lot of unemployment. So he went out and he brought in companies to utilize our cheap labor. The objective of the Camden Park Industrial Estate was to utilize untrained, unskilled labor to get people who were otherwise doing nothing and had no income to get a job where they can work for minimum wage. That was the objective. After Milton Cato implemented this thing and James Mitchell killed it, the Chinese and the Indians implement the same thing in their countries and for over 40 years the Chinese had been using this to develop their economy. Right? So we see Milton Cato was a visionary who foresee something put it into place, get it running, and have Vincentian benefiting from these things. So, while Milton Cato was some premier and prime minister, the coconut factory, and was pro producing thousands of jobs. This year, produced a couple, like about 50 or so jobs. But, Every farmer in St. Vincent and the Grenadines were benefiting from the EC. The Camden Park Industrial Estate benefited thousands of people who were not otherwise employed but were able to gain employment. It means Milton Cato was a visionary because the Chinese took up what Milton Cato had foreseen and implemented. The Indians took it up. The Koreans took it up and implemented in their country. And this is what caused the Chinese to develop into what they are today. This is what caused India to develop into what it is today. What Milton Cato foresaw, James Mitchell couldn't see it because he wasn't bright enough to see it banana industry took off under E.T. Joshua. It took greater height under Milton Cato and it died under James Mitchell. How did it die? Remember James Mitchell was an anagonomist. He's supposed to know about plants and plant health and plant life and diseases and so on. He allowed a fellow, I think it's Mr. Cabral, from Santa C. Cultured banana plant into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This banana plant did not have any immune system. So anytime they are infected, they cannot survive the infection. Our banana plant has been, we've been using it for over 50 years. They went through Black Sigatoga, Leaf Spots, and a whole range of banana disease, and they overcome them. So our banana plants had a very strong immune system. James Mitchell allowed this man from Sansasi to bring in these cultured banana plants that had no immune system to destroy our old sturdy banana plants. The same South American that encouraged Mr. Cabral, or what's his name, to bring in this plant are the same South American that unleashed the leaf spot and the black cigatoga on these cultured banana plants and caused our banana industry 
to go into a pandemic stage and then eventually die because we were unable to supply our market with the fruits that we were producing. So we see James Mitchell did not know what he was doing. And we see Milton Cato was a visionary in that he put in the infrastructure that facilitated the development of these industries that die under James Mitchell. Another thing, one of the way the government in Joshua and prior Joshua time ensure that the prison, the hospital, the mental health center, and the poor home, the TB home, were provided with milk is that they purchase a lot of cattle and in Camden Park they have the Camden Park dairy where the dairy would produce this large volume of milk that will supply the hospital the prison the poor home the Melton home the TB home and in some cases it provided the schools with fresh milk every day, fresh cow's milk every day. When Milton Cato became Premier and later Prime Minister, Milton Cato saw the need for this thing to continue, but to continue in an updated form. And not only that, instead of just supplying the hospital, the prison, the poor home, the melting home, and the TB home. And one proof with milk, why don't we establish it? Continue to supply these institutions with the milk. But sell milk to the shops in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Not only milk, but let us go into producing orange juice and other dairy products. Not only will we sell them to the shops in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we will ship them overseas. Milton Cato produced the Diamond Dairy Facility, which was producing dairy products and providing the hospital and all of the institution with these dairy products, free of course, selling these dairy products to the stores and the shop and the supermarket in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and exporting all of these dairy products. The Diamond Dairy. The Diamond Dairy, as it was called, saw its debt on the James Mitchell. My people, if you have an industry, for example, the coconut factory, they were producing liquid soap, even before liquid soap was a thing. St. Vincent and the Grenadines were producing liquid soap in a rough way, they call it bagasse. We were, we were producing washing soap, a blue and a transparent washing soap. Right? We were, we were producing lard and we were producing coconut oil on a large scale volume where we were shipping them to the other Caribbean countries. Now, James Mitchell went to a seminar. Some American told him that coconut oil is high in cholesterol. When the coconut oil factory became too expensive to operate, what he was supposed to do? He was supposed to ensure that the factory modernized the equipment so that they did make production of the things they were producing cheaper. No, he closed it down. He says, coconut oil, rich in cholesterol. It's not good for you. But we later found out that the American fooled him because St. Vincent the Grenadines were producing coconut oil in such huge volumes. And if the benefits of coconut oil were made known to us, then St. Vincent and the Grenadines would have become rich by producing and exporting coconut oil. Also, the Americans were producing what is called a synthetic product called corn oil. 
and our coconut oil was posing a threat to the corn oil. So they had to get us out of business. So instead of James Mitchell, help the small business or encourage them to modify the operation, take out the old ancient equipment that they had, the mills and so forth, and buy a smaller, less expensive to operate system, close them down. The Camden Park industrial site, he allowed to go out of business instead of he stepped in, allowed that to go out of business, thousands of people on the bread line. ECA went out of business because of poor management on the Canadian side. Instead of James Mitchell starting a new, a new business, using the same facilities, the same technical expertise, using Marcus Defreitas, Doggy Defreitas and their brothers in Canada to teach some other investor how to conduct this business. Now what are you going to do? We change the name. It is a new LLC. You open an LLC in Canada and you continue the operation under a new name. No, he allowed them to go to business, put in thousands of farmers at the disadvantage where they are producing large volumes of high quality crop. But there was no market to sell them because ECA went out of business. And he allowed Mr. Cabral and Santosi to bring cultured banana plant, destroy our sturdy banana plant that would have withstand black cigatoga, leaf spot and so forth, and put our banana industry out of business. So we see here, it even is a theater. Joshua was a genius. Milton Cato was a genius. James Mitchell managed to convince Vincentians that these people did not know what they were doing. My people here we see. James Mitchell was responsible for the deaths of several key industries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that were instrumental in consistently growing our GDP and provided large volumes of employment for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He was also responsible for implementing some infrastructural project and private investment project where he borrowed large volumes of money, monies which put our countries in debt. And these projects were never able to pay back for themselves, but were responsible for becoming white elephants, where the government were forced to put money into these projects to keep them afloat and to try to salvage what he has created. James Mitchell was instrumental in consistently growing the GDP, yet he have never created an industry. The question is, how was James Mitchell instrumental in growing our GDP after he have put our country in serious debt with these projects and he destroyed certain factors within the economy? that were responsible for growing the GDP and for large volumes of employment. This is what happened. James Mitchell convinced Mr. Ulrich Arnim Eustace to be his physical advisor. It is Arnim's, Eustace's physical policies that caused St. Vincent's economy to grow. Now, we were not producing anything. So how did our GDP consistently grow? James Mitchell was instrumental in going to donor agencies and donor countries and get large grants where he didn't have to pay back the money and small interest loans. He caused these small interest loans to do projects within the economy. These projects put needed capital into the economy, grow the circulating capital and cause the, the, the GDP to grow. It caused the GDP to grow because the people were producing and monies were being pumped into the economy. Not because we were producing anything, but because of the gifts 
who came from the Friends of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the donor agencies and donor countries. So the long and short of it, James Mitchell were responsible for killing several key industries. He was responsible for getting involved in private sector investment and for developing some infrastructure that were not needed that are currently a burden on St. Vincent and the Grenadines even 20-something years after he have left government. He never developed an industry. He never started an industry. But he has proven to be the man who was incompetent and did not know what he was doing. My people, tomorrow, I'm going to prove to you that Ralph Bonsavs is an income proof and he don't know what he's doing. My name is Chief Strongland, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Fred and Mose did so, bless poor machismo. A few years ago, Ralph Raper police. If you hear all you hear, see me. All you feel, all you destroy me. I will never ever surrender. Politicians in democracy. All you hypocrites.